Hello my friends, I'm Clover and today we're solving a puzzle called Clone of the Attacks by Philip Newman, um, a riff on Attack of the Clones. So we have been working on filling out our chart of double variants that we've set for gas so far. Um, and Killer is probably our single favorite variant on the gas team and one that we have turned to time and again. And we have also done Killer in conjunction with most other common variants that you see in Sudoku. However, Philip discovered recently that we have not ever published in GAS a killer clone Sudoku, so he has taken it upon himself to rectify this. This puzzle was originally posted in GAS on July 4th, 2024, and it is a killer clone Sudoku. So, we have standard Sudoku rules, so replacing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3x3 three three region. And then in addition, there are killer cages. So these cages tell you that the digits contained within the dashed outlined region have to sum to the little clue number in the top left corner of the region. Uh, digits can't repeat within cages. And then on top of that, we have two pairs of clones. So these two groups of digits have to contain exactly the same digits in the same order. For instance, if this was a one, then that would have to also be a one because it's the top center digit in both of the two clones. And the same is true for these two groups of digits. One thing to be a little cautious about with a clone puzzle that looks like this, these, even though they are three by three highlighted regions, do not count as Sudoku regions, which means that for instance, within this region, digits might repeat. It's possible for that to be a seven and seven, and then therefore these would also be seven and seven. That's impossible for other reasons, but under the clone and standard Sudoku rules that is permitted. So let's solve. So I see some cages that are pretty restricted. 17 in two cells in Sudoku is always eight and nine. And because of the clones, I know that this digit also has to be either eight or nine. However, that digit is in a nine cage, so it can't be a nine, that would be too large. So that must be an eight accompanied by a one, and we can make its clone an eight as well. Here, 16 in two cells is always 7 and 9. So this cell, because that is the clone of that one, also has to be either 7 or 9. But if you look at the cage this is contained in, it is contained in a 14 cage. And so if this was a 7, we would have two 7s in the same cage together. That's impossible. So that must be a 9 with a 5, and then that is a 9 with a 7. 7 and 3 cells in a killer cage will always be 1, 2, and 4. So this digit is either 1, 2, or 4. Now, if we made this a one, the remaining two digits would have to sum to 19 to make this a total of 20, which we can't do using Sudoku digits. Same thing for two, the remaining digits would have to sum to 18, which is only possible if you repeat a nine, which is not allowed. So that must be a four, and its clone up here is also a four. That one makes that a two and a one. Now with a four in a 20 cage, the remainder is 16, which is only possible as seven plus nine. Now down here, a 23 cage and three cells. You can work this one out. The maximal of three cells is gonna be seven, eight, and nine. 23 is just one lower than that, so it must be six, eight, and nine. This can't be the eight, so there's the eight. This cell can't be my nine, so it's a six. And now that tells us that we have a six in the bottom left corner of this clone region. Now, because this six is in a 10 cage, we need a total of four left over. Can't be two plus two because that repeats, so that must be one plus three. So now we've filled in or at least pencil marked all of our clones, we have to start, or all of our killer cages, we have to start working on the clones. And when I test solved this, the first thing that stood out to me here is that we have a three and a six in this region, so I can't place six, three, three or six in any of these cells here. And so these two cells in row six have to be three and six. There's nowhere else to put them in the row. And that tells me that these three cells will be two, five, and seven. And that does a few things for me. So first of all, I know now that the top right corner of this clone is either three or six, so I'll pencil that in. And I know that the top left corner of that clone is two, five, or seven. There's a two in that region, so I'll eliminate two. I also now know that the top center digit in these large clones is either a three or a six, so I will pencil that in as well. And now here, the digits that I'm still going to need are four, eight, and nine. That can't be a nine, so that's either a four or an eight. That's just to finish the region. And because that's within a clone, this digit also has to be either a four or an eight. But in that case, there's an eight in the row. So now that will be a four with an eight, nine pair here. So where do we go from there? 
So let's finish off this row. So we have a four, a six, a seven, and a nine. So we still need a one, two, three, five, and eight. And that's kind of a lot of pencil marking, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because I think the payoff will be a lot because that lets me pencil mark a substantial amount of this clone. So I can eliminate one and eight here because those are in the region. I can eliminate five here. What else can I eliminate based on the clones? So this now has to be either two, three, or five, and this will be one, two, three, five, or eight. But because there's a one there and an eight here, that can't be one or eight. So that is now two, three, or five, and eight will be in one of those cells. All right, the next thing that stands out to me is that I have eights here and here. So that gives me a hidden eight in region two because there's nowhere else I can put an eight in the region. That gives me an eight here with a clone. That eliminates eight from the cell. And so the work that we did a minute ago lets us place an eight now right there. On top of that, we need to place a six and a nine in this region somewhere. Nine can't go in those cells. And because of the nine in row one, it can't go in those cells. So it goes here. And that leaves us with only one position to put the six in. It must go there because it can't go in column six. So these now have to be three, five, and seven. Therefore, this cell can't contain a three or a five. So that's a two and I can clone it over here and I can eliminate twos there. Now the only position for a five in row four is in this cell and that is going to become a five. So if we look a little bit more at these center three columns, to finish column six, these cells will have to contain a one and a four, and we know the order. And that tells us that this cell is a one because it is cloned from over here. That one resolves this three and resolves this one. That one here resolves this three, which tells us that this digit is a six. And I'm gonna do a few things with that. I'm gonna clone that over to here. And on top of that, it tells me this is a three. And I guess it also told me that just via ordinary Sudoku. So I've got that in a couple different ways. To finish this region, I need a five and a six. There's a six there already, so that'll be my five, and there's my six. Now to finish this column, I need a two and a seven, and to finish this column, I need a three and a four. Okay, these two cells are going to be one and two in some order, and I don't remember how early exactly you can get this last digit in the, central, in the center of these clones. Let's see if we can figure out what that'll have to be now. I think it's about time for that. So if we just look at the bottom right clone first, that digit can't be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, or an eight or a nine. So it actually must be a seven already. So we're gonna make that a seven, which resolves this into a five. And this is now a three seven pair. Okay, this row is looking pretty populated. I still need a two, a four, and a six to finish the row. That can't be a six, that can't be a four, just because of what's already in the region here and what is already in the column. In fact, this row has to finish with a one, two, and six. And I think I can resolve those based on what I have in my rows here. So that'll be a two, a six, and a one. And now this is a four and I can place a two here, which resolves the two seven. Now, in this region, I still need a three, a four, and a five. This can't be a four because of the four in row two. This can't be a four because of the four in this column. And actually there's already a five in the column two. So this fully resolves. And this three that I just placed lets me resolve the three seven pair. Now these digits will be a five and an eight. There's a five in this column. So I'll make that an eight and make this a five. And now I'll have a seven and a nine here. This must be either a one or a two to finish up. And in the region here, I need a one, a two, a three, and a six. That can't be one or two, that can't be a six. Now let's look at this row. I still need three, four, six, and nine. This can't be three, six, or nine because of what's already present in the column. So that'll be a four, which resolves all of these pencil marks and also lets me resolve this eight, nine pair. And that can't be a six at this point. So here I'm going to need a one and an eight to finish. And here I need three, five, six, and seven. That can't be a six, that can't be a six. That, those can't be threes. This must be a two because there's a one and three in the row. That's now a seven and a two, a five and a seven one, three, two, one, and four. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's lovely clone of the attacks. I hope you enjoyed that one. It might've been a little bit lengthier um, and a little bit more technical than some of what we see on this channel. That said, I hope that you found that um, kind of figure outable, even if it took you a little bit longer than usual. And I hope that you enjoyed it. If you wanna try it yourself and you haven't yet, the link is in the description of this video right down there. I will see you next time.